Hello everybody, my name is Buckle and welcome to The Link Show. Yes, welcome everybody to week three of our Christmas series of The Link Show. We are so pumped to have everybody with us today. A special shout out to all the locations that have just linked in as well. We are on week three, like we said, of Christmas and we've got so much lined up for today. It's going to be a blast. And I think by now it's fair to say that pretty much everybody is on Christmas holidays. Maybe some of you are camping, maybe some of you are staying at home. I don't know how you're celebrating Christmas. I'm doing it with my family and our team is also doing the same, which is why, like we mentioned at the beginning of the Christmas series, this week, next week, pre-recorded, because we wanted to make sure that our guys had a chance to also have a Christmas holiday break just like you. But you know what? Today is still going to be an absolute blast. We are going to have a heap of fun. And so here's what's coming up today. We are going to be looking at our week three of Christmas on the farm. We've gone down, we've looked at all the animals, we've had a blast. And so we're on the final week of the farm visit today, which we're super excited about. Plus later on, we've got a new emoji challenge game. It is our new Kahoot that everybody can play along with. We are playing an emoji challenge and you need to pick the Christmas Carol. So we're going to find out whether you know your Christmas carols as well as the person next to you or not, which is going to be fun. I know all my Christmas carols. Our family loves Christmas, so we sing them all the time. So I think I might actually do pretty well with this one, but we'll see how we go. And then later on, as always, we're going to be reading out your shout outs from last week. And so if you want to shout out next week, make sure you send them in today and we're going to read them next Sunday on The Link Show, which is going to be fun. Plus, we've got to take a look at the Kahoot results from last week as well. But hey, let's start by giving a shout out to the churches that we've got linked in with us today. We've got Centerpoint Kids, we've got Metro Kids, Gold Coast Salvos, Bassy Fern Salvos, River Kids, Zset Kids, Chapel Kids, Embassy Kids, Rise Kids, Glow, Celebrate and River's Edge. Nice to have all of you with us today for Christmas. Hope you are having as much fun as I am. And so let's jump in. Let's say good day to a few people as well. We have a few new shout outs, which is kind of fun. I love reading out your shout outs. It makes me fun. Someone here is saying, Buckle, we love the Link Show. Hope that your Christmas is as relaxing as ours. I think that's a good one. I like that. Someone here is saying, Buckle, we love the Link Show. We love hanging out with all the games. Uh, we're going to be watching this while we're away on holidays. Thank you. I love that. That's why we do it through YouTube, because we want you to be able to watch the Link Show from no matter where you are. Someone here actually asked um, the other week about how many kids I have in my family. I actually have three children. I've got a 10-year-old an eight-year-old and a two-year-old baby. You've seen all of them in previous episodes of The Link Show. Someone has got Merry Christmas and they put a bajillion Christmas tree emojis, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, someone else here is saying, Buckle, we think you're funny and you're a little bit weird, but we love it. Thank you very much. I love that. But hey, if you want to get your shout-out, make sure you send it in. The way you can be a part of the show and send in your shout-outs, as always, is over at linkkids.com.au forward slash live. This is where you can be a part of everything that we're doing, so come over to this page, scroll down, click on message and you can send in a shout out. We're going to be reading all of your shout outs next week from this week. Today's live vote, which is a fun one. If you had to wear a costume to school every day, which one would you choose? Would you choose a Santa costume or an elf costume? I'm going to go Santa costume because I think Santa costumes are awesome and I'm looking forward to seeing how we go, seeing who the winner is for that. As always, if you want us to pray for you, you can always come and click pray for me, send through a prayer request and later on, we're playing the Christmas emoji challenge. So don't do that yet. We'll let you know when the right time is for that. But hey, that's enough of me. We are going to jump straight into part one of today's preach. And then we're coming back and we're playing the Christmas emoji challenge. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, Buckle here. We are back with week three of our Christmas series. And we're still down here on the farm. We're hanging out, having an absolute blast. Now today we're talking about building things and having a plan. What a lot of you may not know is my very first real job that I had when I left school was actually designing playgrounds and so we would get a call or an email from a company or a school or a council or sometimes like a McDonald's or a Hungry Jack's wanting a playground and my job on the computer was to come up with the plans and the design for the playground. So they would send us how big their space was and then me and our team would design a playground, we'd draw it on paper with what we wanted to do, then we'd sit in front of the computer and we would actually build the playground in 3D on the computer. Once we built the playground in 3D and we knew all the pieces were there, then we would make a list of all the components that we used to build the playground. How many poles, how many clamps, how many platforms, how many slides, how many panels, all of those different 
things. Then from that we would create a plan to show how much space was needed, where the soft fall, that's like the sand or the bark or the rubber that stops you from getting hurt when you fall off. How much space did that need? How much was it gonna cost? How do you build the thing? We would do all of that on the computer. Then we would send that plan down to the warehouse where the team would go through all the shelves, find all the different pieces, put them on big pallets, wrap it in plastic, chuck it on a truck, and it would get sent to the location. Then the team on the ground, they'd have to read the plans. They would drill holes in the ground, put the poles in, have to fill it with concrete to make sure they were stable. Once that done, they would start to clamp on all the different pieces. They'd clamp on the platforms and the safety panels and the activities and the slides and the monkey bars. But here's the thing. The team on the ground didn't know where to put the poles or where to put the different pieces if they didn't follow the plan. And because we had thought through at the very beginning, the start to the end and every step in between, it was easy to build the playground and the people on the ground could trust that although they weren't a part of the whole process, they just had to do their part because we knew the master plan. We knew all of it. We had prepared for it. We knew exactly what needed to happen. I remember one time I was helping my friend put together some IKEA furniture. It was a set of drawers and we started building it and we made the mistake that we thought we could do it without reading the instructions. And so we started putting it together and we're like, oh, well this really tall piece that's not very wide, they must be the sides and well these bits, these must be the drawers, this must be the back, these are probably the handles and we put it all together, we were nearly done and we went to put the drawers into the spaces where they went. But because we didn't read the instructions, you know the metal runners that help the drawers stay in place? We put every single one in upside down and so we couldn't get to them without pulling the sides back off and when the sides come off the top has to come off and essentially we had to start again you see knowing the plan and following the plan is so important and in our lives this christmas we're talking about the fact that god had a master plan not just for me and not just for you, but for the entire world. Because I know there's been times in my life where I felt like I don't know what's happening next. I don't know that I'm smart enough or clever enough to figure out what I'm meant to do, but I have to stop and trust that God knows. And so we're gonna go take another look at some more of the Christmas story to show you and reveal to you that God knows what's going on. God has a plan. There's nothing that is a surprise to him. And all we need to do is trust that his master plan is perfect. But first, I think I'm going to go and have a little bit more fun. I love it here so much. I love it. God's got a plan. And that was what Christmas is all about. That God had a plan to help us. And Jesus is the answer. I think that was pretty cool. But hey, right now we're going to jump straight over to our emoji challenge for our Christmas carols, which I'm pretty pumped about. We're going to see whether you can figure it out. So the way to be a part of the game is leaders, if you're at church or kids, if you're at home, linkkids.com.au forward slash live. Come over to this page, scroll your way down. You'll be able to see here on Christmas emoji challenge. Click spin the wheel. Get yourself a username. We're going to see how you go. I am the Rocky Tiger. Now you do get two extra spins if you're not sure. So I'm going to spin it again. The Dynamic Leopard. Yes, I want to be the Dynamic Leopard. Okay, that's a good username. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to load that one up. That's going to be what I'm going to be. What are you? And if you do get a cool username, and if you get on the podium, make sure you send us a shout out, letting us know what your username was so that we can go and have a look and see if we know. If you put it in, be like, hey, Buckle, my name is Dan, and I got second on Kahoot. 
and this was my username. I was the, was it Dynamic Leopard? I forgot what my username was already. Then that's the way it is. But hey, this is the way this is gonna work. We are gonna put a series of emojis on the screen. And what's gonna happen is you gotta figure out what the Christmas Carol is from the multiple choice options that you've got and figure out exactly what it is. So let's jump straight over and do the first one together. Here we go. All right. It looks like it's a picture of, what have we got? We got some, we got some calendars, I think. They're calendars. And then we've got a Christmas tree. Okay, what could that be? Calendars and a Christmas tree. The options are, is it Oh Holy Night? Is it the 12 days of Christmas? Is it Hark the Herald Angels Sing? Or is it I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas? Let's have a look. We'll do the first one together just to make sure that everyone gets the answer right. So Oh Holy Night, I don't really see anything about night on the emoji there. Uh, 12 days of Christmas. Well, days are represented on a calendar. So maybe it has something to do with that one. Half the Herald Angels Sing. I don't see any angels. And Dreaming of a White Christmas. I don't see any white on there. I think the answer is going to be 12 days of Christmas. Let's have a look. That is correct. There we go. And if you do that, and if you get them all correct, you get a thousand points for every single one. And there's five rounds total. So that was round one. Now we're on to round two. Are you ready? We're going to put the next one up. Number two. We'll see how you go. Let's do this. All right. We have we have some musical notes. It looks like we have a bell of some kind. And it looks like we've got an electric guitar. An electric guitar. So the options are, we've got, is it silver bells? So silver bells, silver bells, whatever that one is. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Is it that one? Is it jingle bell rock? Or is it... Uh, angels we've heard on high. Which of those do you think is the correct answer? Let's have a look. So we've got we've got some music, we've got a bell, and we've got a, a guitar, maybe for rock and roll. I'm not sure. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds, see if you can figure it out. Let's see. Music. We've got bells. We've got a guitar. What could it be? What could it be? Can you figure it out? Five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. The answer is, of course. Jingle Bell Rock. Get it? We got Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, and then Rock and Roll. So Jingle Bell Rock. There you go. All right, let's jump straight into round three. Here we go. What have we got this time? We have a guitar again. We've got we've got some arrows in a in a, a circle maybe, and then we've got a Christmas tree. So we've got a guitar, we've got we've got circles, and we've got a Christmas tree. Now let's see what the options are in our multiple choice. We have is it Jingle Bells again? Jingle Bells is it Silver Bells? Is it We Three Kings? Or is it rocking around the Christmas tree? I'll give you 10 seconds. See if you can figure it out. We've got a guitar. We've got our arrows in backwards and forwards. And we also have the Christmas tree. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. The answer is, of course, you know this one. It's rocking around the Christmas tree. Get it? It's a rock and roll. It's a guitar rocking around the Christmas tree. Of course you knew this one. All right. Let's jump straight into round four. Here we go. Round four. Throw it up there. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. We have... We have an emoji doing a shh. And then we've got, uh, is it a cheese? No, it's a moon. It's not cheese. It's a moon. Okay, I figured that one out. Let's see what the options are. We have Silent Night, Silver Bells, Angels We've Heard on High, or is it Little Drummer Boy? Those are your options. 10 seconds. Chuck it up. Now, time starts. Here we go. All right. So we've got, what could it be? So Silent Night, Silver Bells, Angels We've Heard on High, Little Drummer Boy. Um... I mean, the guy is doing a whisper. Maybe that helps you. That might be a clue. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. The answer is, of course, it is Silent Night. See? Silent Night. Oh. I can't sing. I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do that to you guys. It's all good. Last round. Fifth one. Here we go. Ooh, it's a tough one. What have we got? We've got, like, praying hands of some kind. We're pointing. We're doing pointing somewhere. We've got... A party celebration of some kind. And then we've got another Christmas tree. What are the options? I feel like we need to see the multiple choice because I'm, I'm mad confused with this one. All right, let's have a look. Your options are, it's Christmas time. What is that one? Is that the, what's the Christmas time? Is that the one from Giggle and Hoot? Is that the Giggle and Hoot? I'm not sure. It's Christmas time. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Is it joy to the world? Or is it I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. All right, let's have a look. So 10 seconds, your time starts now. We've got praying hands, or maybe if you want something, you're saying, I want something. Uh, we're pointing at something or someone. We've got a party, a celebration, and a Christmas tree. Can you figure it out? Five more seconds, four, three, two, one. This one was a little difficult just to finish it off, but I reckon a lot of you got it. Ready? We wish you 
a merry for party Christmas tree. So the answer is, of course, we wish you a merry Christmas. Those are all the answers. I'm sure you got them better than I did. <laughs> that was fun. I love emoji challenge. And I also love, as always, I love, I love Christmas carols. I love singing. But hey, let's jump over real quick before we move on to part two of the preach. Let's have a look and see what your would you rather from last week was. And the question was, if you could have any friend that was a Christmas character as your friend, would you want Frosty the Snowman or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? It was clear cut. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer got nine scene versus three for Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that everyone, if they had the choice, would love Ro I reckon Rudolph the Red, red Nose Reindeer too. Imagine being able to fly around the world on the back of a flying reindeer with a red nose. All right, last thing we need to do really quickly is we need to see what your scores were last week for Count the Sheep on Kahoot. Hopefully you write your name down. I'm pretty sure you all got five out of five on this, so it's going to be fastest finger first. Third place, we had the Tropical Crab. Second place, the Smiling Owl. But the fastest of you all was none other than the Prairie Fox. So whoever was the Prairie Fox, congratulations to you. Massive shout out. Make sure you send us a shout out. Be like, Buckle, I was the Prairie Fox. I want to be able to celebrate you next week. I think that's kind of cool. But hey, it is time for you to grab your Bible, your notepad, and your pencil, because we are going to go jump over to part two of this week's preach. Let's check it out. And so let's take a look at the Christmas story in relation to God's plan. You see, if I was planning the birth of Jesus, the person who is coming to be the savior of the world, I would want everyone to know about it. I would have trumpet and TV ads and all the things to make sure that everybody knew that Jesus had been born. But we don't see it that way. We see Jesus is born humble. But when you start to dig a little deeper in the story, you realize that God had a plan all along. He knew exactly what was gonna happen and he had a plan for it, right from the very beginning of time when God first made Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he knew that they would mess up and that we would need a savior. And he had already been planning for that from the very beginning. We even look at things like King Herod trying to get rid of baby Jesus, that an angel comes and tells Joseph that they should escape and go somewhere else down to Egypt before anything even happens to keep Jesus safe. The angel tells the wise men not to go back to King Herod to tell him where baby Jesus was, but to go home a different way. Come check this out. There's a brand new baby goat that is less than one day old. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. God had a plan and he was weaving everything together to work for good. And you see, it's the same for us. We have to trust that God has got a good plan for our lives. I love in Jeremiah 29, 11, that's below me, write it down. It says this, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. He's got a plan for you. I love in 1 Corinthians, it even says that the story of Jesus and the cross seems like foolishness to the world. But for those of us that love Jesus, we've got this realization that it's the greatest story, the greatest plan ever, because it shows how much God loves us. I love that there's a master plan, that God knows exactly what tomorrow looks like for you, if it's gonna be a good day, or if it's gonna be a bad day, no matter what it is. The Bible says that He is working all things together for good, for those that love Him and are called according to His purpose. God's in control. He's making everything end up for good for those that love Him. That includes you. How cool, how amazing is that? And I think the thing that is the most important this Christmas, especially considering we're nearly at Christmas day, it's this week, Christmas is coming, is that Christmas is all about the fact that Jesus loves you. He went through everything he did. He left heaven, came to earth, was born as a baby because he loves you. And so maybe you're watching today and maybe you've never heard that Jesus loves you, that he has a plan for your life, that he loves you and he cares for you. You see, the Bible says in the book of Romans, it says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus, who's the son of God, died on the cross and rose on the third day and you say with your mouth, you say, Jesus, you are my Lord. In other words, by calling someone your Lord, you're saying, I will live my life your way instead of my own way. We say sorry for our mistakes and we're forgiven. And Jesus says that when we do that, we can be friends with God again through Jesus. It's the only way. And so if you want to make the decision today to make Jesus the Lord of your life, to say yes to Jesus, I want to say a prayer with you doing exactly 
that. I'll say one line of the prayer. You repeat it after me no matter where you are. And hey, if you're watching this from maybe church or somewhere with a group of people, everyone else in the room, if you've said this prayer before, would you pray it out loud as well? Just in case there's someone there with you that wants to pray this for the very first time. We all good? We ready? Great. Close your eyes. Say this prayer after me. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me so much that you gave your life to save me. I say yes to Jesus. Jesus be my Lord, my Savior, and my friend. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I choose to live my life your way. In Jesus' name we all said, amen. So good. Hey, if you did pray that prayer for the first time, tell a grown-up that you trust or a kid's pastor, someone at your church, so we can get you a Bible. We can help you to be the live so we can help you to live the most amazing life. But hey, really quickly, we've also got some other prayer requests that came through from last week and during the week. Someone here is praying that this virus would go away. I think that's a great prayer. We're going to keep praying that until it happens. Someone's praying that they have a great Christmas. And we're praying for that too, that Christmas is amazing. Now, last week we prayed for a friend of ours uh, who's back at hospital again. And so we're going to keep praying for her. She knows who she is and she knows that we're praying for her. So we're going to keep praying until we hear a good report. Uh, and someone else is praying again because uh, their family, they had lost their grandma last, last week, the couple of weeks ago and we're going to keep praying for them as well and hey keep sending through your pray for me's because we love praying for you because we believe that god answers prayer close your eyes one more time while we pray father god i thank you for every single request that's come through and even the ones that haven't come yet but are going to come in this coming week we know that you love us you care for us and you've got our best intentions at heart so god we pray that this virus would go away god that we can get on living our life to its fullest with you god we pray that no matter what happens that we'd have the most incredible christmas god for our friend who's been in hospital having work done on her head. She's had some issues. God, we're praying for healing in the name of Jesus, that everything would be back to normal and she would get a good doctor's report. And Father, for this family that lost their grandma, we keep praying for peace. And Father God, for everyone that hasn't even sent through their pray for me yet, but they're coming. God, we know that you know. And so we pray for everybody in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. Amen just means so be it or let it be. But hey, that was fun. Remember, next week, Ling Show pre-recorded again, but we're going to be doing it during the week. So get your shout-outs in today and we will film this week and we'll make sure we give you your shout-outs so you can be celebrated as well. We love you all. We can't wait to see you for next year for season two of the Ling Show as well because next week's Ling Show is like on the 1st of January. It's crazy. But hey, love you all and we will see you all next time. Catch you later. <laughs>